New York is not the first place that comes to mind when you think of surfing, but in fact the roots go way back. In 1912, the great Duke Kahanamoku gave a wave riding demonstration at Rockaway Beach. In the summer of 1960, New York's first surfing contest was held at Lido Beach. In 1974, New York goofy foot Rick Rack Moosin won the U.S. Surfing Championships. But New York surfing's biggest milestone was yet to come. Just a mile east of the Queens County line and less than an hour's drive from the high rises of Manhattan is Long Beach, home of the Quicksilver Pro New York, stop number six on the ASP World Tour. Not only is the contest the first world tour event ever to be held on the East Coast, it is also the richest. With a $1 million prize purse and 32 of the world's best surfers slashing and hacking, it brings surfing to the doorstep of the world's greatest city. When I heard that Quicksilver was going to do a event in New York, I was, I was stoked. I mean, it's pretty sick. When they hear that there's waves in New York, they kind of don't really believe it. So hopefully this contest will change that around. we got some waves coming and people will realize that it gets good. The beach, the crowd is just awesome. They're so into it and they're just right there, right on the, like, along the shoreline, getting all excited. So that's going to pump everyone up. Just coming somewhere new is exciting. This could turn out to be one of the best events of the year. When I first heard about the event in New York, I was definitely a little shocked because you don't get to go in these uh, locations very often. Yeah, excitement, you know, to be able to go to a big city like New York and um, really opening it up to an audience that's never really seen a big surfing event before. I actually have seen great surf there. One time I flew in and it was like six foot spitting barrels both ways. It seems like every year someone's taking a, a giant leap. It is the biggest purse ever in surfing, 300 grand I think for first place, a million dollar purse. 300 grand at the end of the road, bring it on. Day one kicked off in shoulder high, sloppy waves. The first round is non-elimination. Second and third place finishers battle out in round two, while the winners advance to round three. Local boy Ballrum Stack surfed against a fired up Kelly Slater. Ballrum never quite found his rhythm, but that didn't stop the hometown crowd from cheering him on. I grew up here uh, since I was like four. I moved from Florida and I just want to have fun and having a heat with Slater would be cool. Josh Kerr put on a clinic in aerial surfing, posting the highest score of the day. I just kind of turned into that out there. Started getting scores and I was just enjoying myself. Day two was windy and rainy, but the swell kicked up throughout the day. Given the ASP's new One World ranking system, round two was make or break for a handful of surfers. So at the end of this event, if you're in the world rankings, ranked one to 32, you're in. If you're past 32, then you're back to the Prime and Star Series and doing the, the hard yards there to get back to the elite level. But not everyone agrees with this new system. I like to say, and the ASP are gonna find me, because I wanna be a part of this dumb wannabe tennis tour. All these pro servers wanna be tennis players, they wanna do a halfway cutoff. How the f is somebody who's not even competing against our caliber servers ahead of a hundred of us on the on the one world ratings? What he did up there and saying about ASP, people will remember that forever, you know. They'll be like, you remember when Martinez blew up and did this? And you need people like that. It's character in the sport. If you don't have characters, what's the point of it? Bobby is just another character in surfing. There's a long line of him. He's his own man. And when you uh, when you're placed in front of the camera, you you're responsible for your own actions. So he feels good about what he did and that's that. As a result of his outburst, Martinez was suspended from the rest of the event. He got kicked off the, out of the event. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> 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 Surfers have a reputation for being wild and free spirited. But what you may not know is just how serious these guys take their sport. Well, I think right now in this day and age, all athletes are becoming a lot more educated about their bodies and about their sport. and They know that taking care of themselves will keep them in their sport longer. The training in general has changed. A lot more core fitness, being able to pinpoint specific parts of the body you, you, you want to in, improve. And I don't know if it's incredible, but I, I am fitter than I used to be. I know I do train, and uh, a lot of power comes out of your legs and your glutes, really, so you really want to work on them as well as just core strength. 
and um, flexibility. You know, having a warm up and keeping like limber is really it's just critical for uh, avoiding injuries. So that's a good thing. You know, when, when we're not surfing, our whole thing is um, you know try and replicate it to surfing as much as possible. You know, the exercise balls are great or skateboarding. You know, that's sort of the way that the surfing's going, you know. Cardio is a huge thing for surfing, especially if you live in a place like this where you do get big flat spells. To keep your cardio up is probably the most important thing. A combination of swimming and getting in the gym and doing a lot of lunging and twisting exercises and a lot of balance work, like getting on the, the foam roller or the Swiss ball and working on your balance to keep your, your equilibrium right. And yeah, just all that sort of work, but mix it up and keep it fun. Round three was held in windy, grey conditions. Taj Burrow was electric in round three, defeating Adam Melling. After my first wave, I had a big alley-oop section. When I was in the air, my board stuck to my feet perfectly because of the wind, so I was like thinking, oh, this is going to be a fun heat. <laughs> the next morning in heat number seven, Fred Pataccia took down Mick Fanning in what would be the biggest upset of the day. I knew what I wanted to do when I paddled out and uh, get it done and kind of live by the sword and die by the sword. You know, if it didn't work, it didn't work. With those losses, you just got to learn from your mistakes and, um, you know, just try and figure out what was right, what was wrong, and then move on to the next event. Julian Wilson and Owen Wright made short work of their opponents with a dramatic string of aerials. Taj Burrow threw serious tail to defeat Adriana D'Souza by a hair. Well, yeah, in a way, it's pretty similar to an expression session where you do kind of get the opportunity to let loose and just go for big maneuvers because no one does actually lose. But when it comes down to the end of the heat, do you want to win that thing? You know, you get to skip around and go straight to the quarterfinals, and the quarterfinals is a good place to be. With a highly technical shove it and then a giant alley oop, Josh Kerr took down Slater. Me and Kelly were looking at each other before we paddled out, going, oh, there's some big airs to go down out there. Those rights are going back against the green with some little corners on them. They're, they're shorter, but they offer more real quickly. Kelly got the first like first big score, and um, then I was lucky enough to get a Vero on my back end. I, was, you know, I didn't think I was going to make that, and I got really lucky, so I'm stoked. <laughs> Hector Alves pulled the upset of the round by taking down Joel Parkinson. I don't know, I'm so happy. I don't know what's safe for you. In round five, Julian Wilson KO'd Fred Patacha with a series of powerful turns. A highlight of uh, like of today's best stuff, and also of uh, you know probably of the contest to be one of the better maneuver contests of the year, maybe the best. At the end of round five, there were eight men left standing for their chance to win the largest cash prize in pro surfing history. Friday opened up with offshore overhead ramps. The sun was out, the beach was packed, the stage was set for the final eight surfers to do battle.
quarters, Kelly Slater and Josh Kerr's rematch delivered big time. Uh, yesterday, we watched Josh Kerr beat Kelly, and now, right out in front of us, we're watching him uh, have a little rematch. God, look, Josh has been the guy to beat in those frontside ramps. With the, when those things hook back and wedge, the short ones, Josh is going to get nines for one turn. He definitely put me in my place yesterday, and... I had to figure out how to get around him today. So I hate losing when I have the highest scoring wave of the heat. It's definitely going to eat at me because that's like one more heat was 20 grand and, you know, now my kids have got to eat cereal for dinner. <laughs> yeah, it was a tough heat. No not those many ways. I think me and him, we lost priority a couple of times on wrong ways, but yeah, I'm, I, I was lucky in the end. And then I got a good left and I really should have just went for a big fin bust at the end and I kind of went to nurse it and nose dived and that was what decided the heat. It was uh, just the way it goes. The semifinals ensured a battle between the veterans and a new generation. First semi, you got Taj and Kelly in there, like early 30s and late 30s, right there, and then you got the other side of the draw, which is going to be a semi between like a 21 and another 21 or another 22 year old. This is amazing to see uh, new young guys, you know, coming through their their vein, like semis or final. It's just going to be the young young fella versus the old dog, and um, it's going to be cool to see. It'll be interesting to see. I think Taj is surfing really good. He seems very aggressive. He's gonna give he's gonna Kelly a run for his money for sure. A little over two minutes on the clock, and Slater needing a 9.78, he pulled a rabbit out of the hat. They were right next to each other, and Taj let him have that wave. It was a perfect peak with a massive ramp, and the chances of him pulling that 10-point air off is like pretty small. And he did it again, and yeah, what can you say? It was like I'm sure one of his best days he's ever done of his life. The second semi was all about Owen Wright, who dominated from start to finish with airs, low tails, and smooth carves. Finals hit the water around lunchtime. The sun was blazing, the beach was buzzing with screaming fans, and the waves were pumping far beyond expectations. Wright got straight to work. He started off with a bang with a, what has he got, a, a 9.23 and an 8.6. Put Kelly under the pressure you need to do to, to beat him. Yeah, well, it's not far from finish yet. So yeah, Kelly's the king for a reason, I tell you what. He was had his back against the rope against Taj in the semis and look what happened. It's pretty much the most exciting finale to this event that they could ever ask for. With little more than two minutes remaining on the clock, Slater caught his final wave.
<laughs> Kelly's a huge inspiration and he definitely brought out the best in me today and great final, good waves and um, I just had to get my nines and eights and I knew he was going to get them as well so there's nothing I can do about that. This event is what the tour needed right now and big money, you know, huge crowds, excellent surfing, you know, hopefully America's really impressed. I've never ever been to a surf event where the locals were this supportive and um, nice to us. New York is the new surfing frontier in the world. That's it. Well done. <laughs>